Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for tuning in today. This is another in our series of uh, Chalk Talk videos where we do deep dives on various aspects of uh, storage technology. Joining me today is Rory Bolt, CEO of uh, Proximal Data. Thanks for joining us today, Rory. Thank you for having me. Uh, before we jump into the kind of the details, uh, give us a little background on Proximal. So Proximal Data was founded uh, to address I.O. bottlenecks in virtualized environments. We are a software company that provides host-side caching to solid-state uh, memory devices to speed up IOs and drive virtual machine density in virtualized environments. And, I, and that's a good topic because I, I think one of the things we're seeing, clearly we're seeing users start to um, uh, adopt SSD and solid-state as a, as a mechanism to solve performance problems. And it seems like one of the best paths to get there is caching. And I know you guys do something a little bit different than a lot of the other guys on the market. Can you kind of architect us through that and how that looks? Sure, and, and it's no surprises here. Uh, the storage industry has known that flash is going to be a disruptive force uh, for quite a while. And, and so I'm just trying to draw a very, very uh, crude drawing here of virtualized uh, machines, guest operating systems running on top of a hypervisor. And in this case, uh, we're talking directly about VMware's ESXi. Okay. And, and so what we're trying to do is bring this new technology, uh, Flash, and deploy it in these virtualized environments so that people can drive even more VMs on their existing hardware and address the I.O. bottleneck problem of getting down to these relatively constrained uh, disk resources right. beneath. And the thing that really sets us apart from almost all of the competition is the level and depth of integration we've done with the hypervisor itself. And we've done that for a specific reason. We've done that to make the adoption and benefits available from Flash to a virtualized environment with no impact to IT operations, complete transparency of, of operation, no con reconfiguration of your guests, okay. no agents deployed in your guests, and preserving all the value and all the investment and all the operational procedures around your existing storage infrastructure, right? So we're not a rip and replace solution. We integrate right inside the hypervisor so that we see all the I.O. flowing down from all these virtual machines. We inspect it, and we're going to take the hottest I.O. here, and we're going to reroute it out to your Man, that, that is just the world's worst drawing of a chip, but a solid state device. That's, that's good. I think we got it. All right. And then so basically as a user all, or as a, as either a storage administrator or a virtual administrator, uh, all I'm going to do is basically drop in your software, make the SSD selection that makes the most sense for me, and you guys take care of the rest. That's right. So th this is, in fact, the, the proximal data solution. Okay. It's a single VMware VIB a VMware installation bundle, mm -hmm. one step to deploy it on the hypervisor, like I say, no other changes made to the configuration whatsoever. We will work with either a PCIe-based or an SSD uh, a flash like device. Like a drive-based unit. A drive-based unit. Mm -hmm. And you install our VIB, we inspect all the I.O. flowing through the hypervisor, we determine the placement and put the hot stuff on the flash for you once again. We are a read cache, so we're primarily accelerating the reads. Right. But as a, as a sort of a byproduct of that is by offloading the hot reads, and, and most workloads tend to be read dominated, those reads get piped over to the, to the solid state device. Mm -hmm. It actually frees up the disk subsystem to more effectively process the writes. And so typically uh, guest operating systems have read dominated workloads. What we're going to do is we're going to handle the majority of the reads and the disk subsystem is free then to process the writes more efficiently. So though, even though we aren't directly accelerating the reads, the reads go blaz blazingly fast out of the flash, sure. uh, we actually see an improvement in the write performance too by virtue of the fact that the disks aren't fighting their heads to try and service read requests, right. which are the majority of requests. We're so yeah, you've sort of opened up the highway for just a, a one set of traffic, basically. Correct. Right, okay. Uh, and, and then in a, in a virtual environment, we have uh, you know, multiple servers. Uh, does it, does, do I have to stop using things like vMotion and things like that? Absolutely not. I mean, that, that was one of the founding principles of the company was total transparency to operations. We're 100% compatible with all the value-added features of the hypervisors. The key value 
that, that is the number one feature loved by end users is vMotion. If your solution isn't totally transparent with vMotion, it's not a solution for the data center. Right, yeah, you're not going to be very popular anyways, that, right? Okay. Uh, so then the, um, and I know that one of the things you guys really talk about is, is density, which is a big topic, as you know, that we like to talk about because getting the, the, that metal that surrounds that hypervisor is more expensive than it used to be, you know, because it's a richer box. And what are you seeing typically from ability to scale and density? Are we are we able to add so you know from ten to twenty? What do you what do you guys typically see? So, anyone who's talking about a caching solution that doesn't say the following, uh, you should question very deeply, and that okay. is. The results are entirely workload dependent, so your, okay. your mileage is going to vary. Now, we've taken a number of studies. Uh, Microsoft did a study where they traced all the I.O. of the Microsoft production servers, their web servers, their build servers, uh, their exchange servers, over a 24-hour period, and they published every I.O. that was performed. We used that as a model, and that's how we came up with our, our figures for virtual machine density improvements. Uh, with typical workloads from real-world production environments, we see between two and three times the virtual machine density wow. with our product as opposed to without our product. Okay, great. Uh, so I, I think that's a, a you know a real valuable thing. I think that, that our folks should be looking at right. It's uh, easy to install, non-disruptive to the environment, uh, and, and just starts making things faster, right? Correct. And, and once again, no changes to your infrastructure. Uh, and, and no changes to your operations. Great. Well, Rory, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs>